All right, education, they say, is the bedrock of development in any society. One profession that bears the burden of training and enlightening young minds who then go on to become future leaders or teachers. In Nigeria, many believe that the teaching profession, although noble, still lacks the required recognition and proper reward system in terms of welfare and remuneration. This has, however, not deterred some whose love and passion for educating young Nigerians remain their driving force. Today on the show, we will be speaking with the 2022 Best Teacher Public Secondary School in Nigeria, Adeola Adefemi, awarded by the federal government at this year's World Teachers Day celebration, which held at the Eagle Square. Adeola also received commendation on a car gift from the Lagos State Government earlier this year at the 20. 21 Annual Teachers Merit Award. She joins us in the studio, the awardee herself and overall best teacher in Nigeria. Good morning. Let's roll out the drums. <laughs> Let's <laughs> roll out the drums. <laughs> wow. so, so can we say gone are the days when we used to say a teacher's reward is... Is in heaven. heaven. <laughs> no, no, he's here now. He should be here. here. He should be here. So gone are those days. Yeah, thankful, thankful, thank, thank you for that. But how does it feel? You know, receiving this award, being recognized as uh, the best teacher in Nigeria for public schools. Okay, um, right now, truthfully, to be very factual, I think I removed the person and put myself in a different um, situation because it's difficult to, yes, it's something that I have worked for, if I can say that, but at the same time, I wasn't doing it because I wanted to get the reward. I was doing it because I was enjoying it. So when you get rewarded for something you enjoy doing, I think it's just a step towards the right direction. So right now, how do I feel? I think I'm encouraged, and I feel other teachers are encouraged as, as well. And then my students, because I'm always telling them, okay, fine. It may not be easy. You know, I went to a public school as well in Lagos State. So if they're looking at me right now, they're thinking, okay, if she can do it, then we can do it. So I think that's the most interesting part, knowing fully well that my students would, of course, be encouraged mm. to, you know, go to whatever path and believe in themselves. I think that's the most important. Mm. Mm. It's right really now. interesting. We all went to public schools. <laughs> of I, course. <laughs> when I sit down and I look back, I'm like, okay, I've been to uh, primary school, public primary school, public secondary school, public university, you know, and all of that. It's quite interesting. Mm. But however, did you always want to be a teacher? Let me ask that uh, question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To be very truthful, mm. no. Um, I wanted to, but okay. I think I was scared because I, I, I had this thing. My mom, my grandmother, they were teachers before oh, okay. they retired. So, so it time, runs in the family? Yes, I would say so. <laughs> so every time I look at them, I'm looking at them and, and I'm telling them that of all professions, not because I wasn't interested. I was interested, but I was looking at the, um, I think the financial aspect. Mm. Said, I usually tell, do tell my mom then, and of all profession you ventured into the teaching profession. But I liked the, the things she was doing. And because I gone to a uh, public school, there were things I noticed. And then, as luck would have it, I was posted to a school, a secondary school in Katsina. And I saw the lack and I in felt- Katsina In Katsina State? In Katsina State. So I think that was during my NYC. Yeah, okay. So I, I noticed there were things that were lacking there and I felt I could fill the gap mm. in a way. So I had to go back, because I started with broadcasting, I had to go back to school to you know, get a degree in education. Right, so, so that's the aspect I am interested in what you did differently because there are a majority of teachers in your school but you were doing something differently that made the the state government and uh, the federal government also notice that uh, this person is doing something different what did you do differently to have gotten this reward or award okay, i'll say three things so uh, the first one is another type to complain when I get to whatever, wherever I'm posted, the first thing I ask myself is, we're not complaining here, we're preferring solutions. Mm. So I think the first one is a leadership skill. You can't say you're a teacher and do the ordinary. There's something that has, has to be extra on you. And then whenever I get to a place, I want to ask questions. What are we lacking here? What can we do? How can we help those kids? And that's propelled me to you know, start different projects. So I, if I get to a place and I realize there's a problem, like my new school, the first thing I noticed was, okay, the girls are not coming regularly. There's a problem. So I realized that it was the environment. So instead of me complaining like every other person, I'm not complaining. I'm definitely looking for a solution. And that was when we started the hub. I think that was one thing that stood me out during the federal um, competition. Because the moment they came in, they came in to check me and they saw the hub. I used my money. Like I said, I went for the Fulbright, um, uh, what's it called, program in the U.S. And one of the things they taught us was, you know, 
get solutions for girls and how you can do it. You know, we have the best practices there. So when I got back, I used the money I saved up there to start this hub. And it, it helped my students win numerous awards. And that's the first thing, leadership. You can't just do the same thing and expect a different result. And you can't keep complaining. It doesn't solve the issues. So I think the first thing as a teacher to stand out, you need to have the leadership skills. And number two is the networking. It's not about you alone. You need to. There are people with maybe more difficult situations. If you work with them, if you see it from their side, you'll be able to, you know, get better practices for yourself. And that was what helped me, you know, have friends in Panama, outside Nigeria that have been helping, and then we collaborate to do this work. So when I, when I go for a program, I'm not thinking of, oh, I'm just coming there to enjoy myself. I want to have a good network. I want to collaborate with people. And the collaboration is not about just you and all the people or people your age. The collaboration could be with your students. Mm. You know, they have better ideas sometimes, probably because they are forward thinking. So I'm always looking towards collaboration. And number three is having projects. You know, you have to have projects. You can't, see, chain is not just going to the classroom. You have to have projects that affect lives. These kids are not just people in uniform. They are real human beings and they have needs. Mm -hmm. So when you have this project, you're looking towards solving issues with this project. It could, and it's not just about your school, it's a community. So if you're staying in your school, you're just teaching. But when you're working with people in other schools, it's a community in itself. So I work with schools in my community, like about four schools. So whatever I'm doing, I'm giving back to those ones. And finally, there's no way you call yourself a very good teacher if you, the results is, is not showing you your results. And the results are not about the academics alone. I understand the fact that we have students that are very academic, uh, academical, like they love things about academics. Mm -hmm. And the students that are very creative. Mm -hmm. I, for one, was not very, I was kind of good when it comes to the academics, but I wanted more of the creativity. And thankfully, the Lagos State, the Lagos State government recognizes this and they have the comprehensive school. So those are things I feel, don't just go there because you just want to do it. Do it because you really want to make it. Yeah. Talk to us about the, the selection process for that, because you, be, you winning the Teacher of the Year in Lagos and winning it at the national level is a big deal, mm. right, for that recognition, because I know that there will be people, there will be teachers in Meduguri, there will be teachers in Makurdi, there will be teachers in local, whatever the thing is, also just for the same thing. Yeah. So take us through, what was the process like? How, how, how were you selected? Same. Was that an exam that you had to write? Oh, oh no. Oh, okay. 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 I, I think I'll still go back to the Lagos State Government. It's mm. very similar. All right. Because you have to pass, you have to be selected by your state government. Okay. I was selected by the Lagos State Government. So it's kind of similar and it prepared me for the national award. For the Lagos State Government's um, Merit Award, it was organized by um, the Lagos State Government, the Ministry of Education, but the uh, person in charge was uh, Mrs. Laiko Iki, I think, I think the principal of Green Springs. So the, the tutoring, everything we got there, the mentoring really helped me. It was about four stages for the Lagos State Government. So, you know, we had the one, we had to go online. So if you're not tech savvy, it's gonna be a big deal for okay. you. So we had to, the first one was online, the second one was online, but we had to, have a micro teaching you, and then your social media platforms, how active are you on those platforms? We have to do that. And then we did, we asked different questions, essay questions, then they physically wanted to see us. So it's about selling yourself, your brand. The first question we had there was, sell yourself to us in two minutes. So it's basically about talking about um, selling your brand and then talking about all the projects you've done and everything. So I think that mentally prepared me for this. So when I got called to prepare my, I think it was like a portfolio, a very big one. And I knew I was going to the federal, I knew I was going to be facing teachers from every state including the FCT. So I wasn't playing, to be very factual, because the first, <laughs> the first round was basically, um, we should submit the portfolio. And thankfully, I had everything they needed because the professionalism was one of it. And you're, I mean, I had about 100 certificates already, you know, international, national certificates. They had the hacks for that. And the second round, uh, the second part of it was your, your uh, I think, attitude, like character traits. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, I had commendation letters to that effect. And then what do you do differently? That was when my projects came in and all the competitions I've won. I have trained students who had won over 104 local and international competitions coming from a school, people called low performing. Mm -hmm. So those are the things I put together. And that was just the first round. By the second round, I think they just shortlisted basically and went around the schools. So when they came physically to my school, they wanted to confirm. You said you did this, we want to see it. You have a hope, we want to see it. Okay, can we talk to some of the students? Can we talk to some of the teachers? I think that was the major one and that was how they shortlisted every other person. Beyond the students, how about the teachers? How, how much impact have you had on them? Because this is not uh, the first time you have been recognized. Last year, you made the top 50 list of the Vaki Foundation uh, World Teacher Prize. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering how this has impacted teachers around the schools you have been to. Okay, I would say, of course, everybody wants um, 
excellence, everybody wants victory. And of, I'm also open to collaborations. I think the collaborations that has helped or have helped many of the stitchers go into or do more because they now see it. You know, at the beginning, they were not very sure. They're always like, why are you always very early in school and leaving late? They were always confused. Some would, of course, mock you like, it seems you don't have a life outside the system. Mm -hmm. But now they see that, okay, you can get rewarded. You can actually have this for yourself. So what they do is we, we work together. I collaborate, collaborate with teachers in Nigeria and also Nigeria, even especially in my local uh, community. So we work together and of course some of them are already winning. There are people that won cars too that I collaborated with. Mm. <laughs> so I think that's interesting. Well, that, that, that's really interesting. This, this hub you talk about, um, just a little about the hub. It, well, what what does it do and how, how does it um, reach out to other people to empower? How does it empower other people? Okay. Um, is it a student hub or is it a hub for teachers or what or what kind of a hub is that? As a student hub. Okay. No, for girls actually. Okay. It's basically for girls. When I got to my school, I was deployed to my school, I noticed that the girls were not coming regularly and there were different issues. You know, I think the community is like an like her having like for students with needs, I mean girls with needs, mm -hmm. you know, we have people that are running away from insurgencies and all that. Mm -hmm. So I um, like I literally went into the community just to ask questions, what's going on here? And then we had cases of um, you can be you can be seen but not be heard when you're a girl. And then some of them would not come because they don't have um, sanitary towels or what have you, yeah. basically. So the first thing that came to my mind when I came back to Nigeria was okay, what can I do to help? I want to hear your voices. You can't be in my class and there's only the boys that are talking every time. Only the boys are going for competitions. Only the boys are doing so well. So I want to hear your voices too. And they said, okay, we are too shy. We're not comfortable speaking in class and all that. So that was where the idea came in from. And then I had a brief stint. I think I had a stint in um, broadcasting. So I knew, okay, we can start with the pidgin because they couldn't speak very well. We can use Aousa. We can use Yoruba. We can use any language you have. Just be comfortable enough to talk. And nobody can see your face right now. They only can hear your voice. So be comfortable enough to discuss any discriminatory norm you feel that you're not comfortable with. And don't just uh, talk about them. I need you to prefer solutions in your own way. And that was how we started. So in the hub, we have a side for basically the broadcasting. And then we have for the changing, the sanitary towels, everything. Yeah. And then we have for the counselors. So we can talk about your needs. And you know, you just started like a joke. And from there, they started preferring solutions, talking about the fact that they don't take them out because they feel they're not good enough. And things they don't like, the harassment they face in school, in their communities. And the same kids were the one, the girls were the ones that won these over 100 competitions. I think that's was wow. important. Right. I, I wanted to know um, how the buying for the boys, because majorly it seems you're focusing on the girls. How are we creating a balance for the boys okay. here who, are, who may not feel left out in the process quickly? Okay, the trainings outside the hub are for the two genders. So it's not about just the goal. So they know they can come to me for their broadcasting training or their speaking training. We call it communication skills. They can come to me for that. But basically when it comes to, oh, I want to get heard, this place is a safe space for the girls. Mm. Right. Interesting. We'll have thank to leave you. the conversation here now. Mm. Adiola, Defemi, but we must thank you for what you have been doing so far. Thank and you. Uh, can only wish you all the best. Thank and you thank you for much. coming thank you. on set. Thank you. More wins. Much. You should be the next uh, best teacher in Africa <laughs> and then in the world. So <laughs> it's a big challenge on you now. Yes, of course. And then thank you very much for watching. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine. All right.